Good morning, everybody. I'm Andy Huey, Director of Software Engineering. I'm responsible for the Symphony development team. And in this next section here, we'll be going over a Symphony overview, as well as a deeper dive into the Symphony demo. Last time we were kind of cut short with the Symphony demo, so this time we'll take a closer look at what we have the offer there. So in a nutshell, Symphony is single, place, single pane of glass management. We manage all of the violin uh, arrays. This includes the latest 7000 series FSPs running Concerto OS 7, as well as the older 6000 series running VMOS 6. Um, in terms of integration, we recently added support for VMware with a vCenter plugin. So directly in the vCenter GUI, you're able to monitor and manage your violin lens. We also su provide support for VASA in uh, the latest Symphony release. Is that of, VASA 2? VASA 1 for now. In terms of integration, we interact or we integrate with your Active Directory and LDAP support for authentication authorization. For alerting and um, reporting, we support email, SNMP. And we also have a neat, uh, a neat feature with the report portal where you're easily able to publish your report results. Symphony is a web-based application, so on the back end, we run on Tomcat. We're deployed in a Linux environment. We provide a VM virtual machine for ease of deployment. If you already have a Linux server, you, we can provide you with an RPM that allows you to install it on an existing Linux box. One interesting thing about Symphony is we also support a VM which provides a demo mode where you can actually run Symphony standalone and it simulates the FSPs and the arrays in a self-contained manner. So this is something that's valuable for SEs to demonstrate to customers and the like. On the front end, Symphony is HTML5 based. We don't have reliances on Flash plugins or Java applets or anything like that. So this, this should run on any of your modern web-based uh, browsers, Chrome, Firefox, Safari, IE. We've extensively tested it on Windows and Mac, so it's well, well formatted um, for layouts for those. There's no reason it won't one run on other platforms like tablets and mobile devices, but um, it is optimized for Windows and Mac. Here we have a very, very high level block diagram. Um, basically, Symphony um, leverages the REST APIs from the FSPs. For the 06000 arrays, we have a proprietary XG protocol that we're using. But as Saeed and Sora mentioned, basically we're investing heavily in the REST API. Not only do we have REST API to the FSPs, to the concertos themselves, but there's a REST API into Symphony. So you can leverage that as well. And in fact, our browser, once you load the HTML and the JavaScript, it itself relies on that REST API for all the management capabilities. How much, um, how much data are you keeping in the Symphony server about the actual configuration? Um, the source of truth of the configuration actually lies on the concerto. So theoretically, your Symphony server could go away and your config is still maintained on the FSP. So you don't need to really con be concerned about building a high availability That's correct. Solution. I mean, the only, the, only, the only data that you may lose on the Symphony side is your historical uh, performance metrics and things right. like that. Um, in Symphony, we do provide scripts that you can use to back up your data on Symphony. Um, but yeah, truth be told, if the <coughs> Symphony server dies, you could just bring up another Symphony server and point to your arrays, and you could restore any of your backed up performance data, and you'd be good to go. So if I am, um, if I, sorry, hold on, I don't know who I interrupted. That. No, I was just going to ask him <coughs> what format that data is actually stored in. So can you offer it to? Yeah, we data? we internally we use Postgres to store it. Um, in terms of exporting report metrics and things like that, we do support exporting into CSV. So theoretically, you could periodically export the metrics and you know, suck that into whatever format you need. So, so. in terms of, the, of that management process, mm -hmm. um, could I run multiple Symphony servers in different places yes, and have yes, the arrays determine, the, be the arbiter of any update that I made. Here. Yeah, I mean, you could have multiple Symphony server instances. They all consult, you know, they, they could all be pointing to a single FSP. Um, if one Symphony makes a change, the other one will me basically immediately recognize that change and update right. itself. Okay. So that, that's, that's, that all works. Um, typically, yeah, you don't have one Symphony server, but yeah, if you, if you wanted to, you could have multiple. Well, the, the, the only reason I ask the question is that if you're looking to drive any of this from um, uh, a scripted process or <coughs> into higher level um, mm -hmm. 
mm. management layers. Mm. You want the arbiter of the control to be the array itself. So yes, that it is the array whoever itself. does it, yes. is it, it, you know, it's the array that's in control. Yes. So yes. that you can you can effectively <coughs> absolutely abstract that up. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. So with that, let's just kind of dive right into the demo here. And the first page that you'll see is our homepage. And effectively, this is a dashboard. The dashboard, by default, consists of multiple tabs. Every one of these tabs here has a number of rich gadgets. Uh, these gadgets are all updated in real time. They're all very configurable. So if we take a look at the overall tab, at the high level, you have an inventory gadget, which lets you know the number of FSPs and arrays you have and the various states they're in. If you have any active alerts, you can see that in this alerts widget. At a glance, you can see your performance, whether, whether you're interested in IOPS or latency or bandwidth. Um, these are five minute um, moving averages. You're able to view kind of a mini historical view here. You can zoom in if you so please. We have a health gadget here, which allows you to quickly see which of your arrays or FSPs are you know, in alert states or normal states. And if you see anything of interest, you can always drill down and get more details on those. On the top charts page, we have more performance-oriented details. Um, these top-end gadgets allow you to change a view based on time intervals, like five minutes, one hour, one day, for example. You can look at read, write, mean values. You can look at top end values, bottom end values. You can change your pie chart. And you can look at tabular view. These are all configurable. So if you want to restrict your view to a specific set of FSPs or a specific array or a specific line, they're all very configurable. So that looks really nice. Um, mm -hmm. But obviously, it's running client side, I guess. Uh, the gadget? Yeah, well, the way yeah. you're, you're clicking and moving yeah, must be yeah. running client side. Yes. Um, I've seen a lot of stuff like that where it looks really good until you realize you haven't got enough memory on the, the laptop or whatever device you're using. Well, all, how, all, how lightweight all, is that now? Yeah, all the statistics are collected on the Sifi server. Yeah, Basically, right. this is a very light, it, it's all collected and is rendered on the client. And there, we, we haven't seen any issues with you know the client not being able to render okay. that. I've seen other, pro I've seen not, not storage products, but I've seen other products that have rendered in the client, even though yeah. they're taking the data from the back end yeah. and being yeah. really subjective towards yeah, the this, I mean, as far as, you know, if you click around with it, it's, it's very clicky, it's very responsive. Um, moving on to race summary, you, know, you have a nice space map here where you can see your allocations of thick lens, thin lens, et cetera. Um, a list of all your rays, your HBAs, for example, if you sort in the state, you can quickly see if any of your adapters are offline. Um, these are, these are your, your default dashboard tabs. If you so wish, you can create your own. And these are all customizable per user. So if you log back in as your user, you'll see your same dashboards again. And we provide a very rich library of gadgets that you can add. And once again, these are all very configurable. You can rearrange these, um, slide them around, you know, resize them as you need. Um, for example, I can customize this one. This is, you know, this would be like your LED view for one array versus another array. <coughs> one of the kind of cool things, if you look at the fan speed, they actually spin slowly, mediumly, or fastly. So it's kind of like a cool little thing there. Um, this we're looking at now is obviously like a, a kind of internal performance monitoring tool. Mm -hmm. Does all this stuff go back to violin? And I mean, it, what kind of monitoring service are you guys offering? And is it like a, a proactive we, we thing? We do we do have some <clears throat> call home support. Um, I don't know the details. I don't I know, Pat. Covered. Yeah, okay. So Pat will be covering some of that. Um, but yeah, the other thing is, as an administrator, you may want you, you may not want to be staring at this all day. So we provide um, a very advanced rule engine so that you can set triggers and things like that, both on the Symphony side as well as on the Concerto side. Can you also, um, you mentioned earlier on, uh, I can't remember who mentioned it, mm -hmm. about uh, RESTful API support. Mm -hmm. uh, is it possible to use that to drag statistics out on a regular basis from the platform that I can then pump into my enterprise monitoring yeah. platform yeah. and so forth? Yeah, well, the statistics, you can drag them, you'd have to pull them out of Symfony. Um, yeah, there are, there are raw values that you can grab from the, the array itself. Yeah, and that's also available through a REST API. But yeah, you can certainly do that. 
yeah. just from an aggregation standpoint, it just makes more sense to get them from one place. Then, doesn't it? Yeah, 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 totally. So these are your dashboards. <coughs> yeah, once again, they're all very configurable. Um, let's see. Okay, so let's move on to your view. On your view, on the left-hand pane here, you have your navigation and you are able to group these based on your chassis. So if you have like a 7700, you could have a couple external heads and any number of rays backing that up. At a glance, you can quickly see if any of these FSPs are in an alerted state. There's like a little health icon. For example, this guy is okay. This one's in an alert state. Um, the badging here lets you know whether there's the number of alerts. It lets you know you can see here a quick graph showing your space consumption based on thick lens, thin lens, et cetera. You can get your five minute average IOPS at a glance here. So for example, if I just pick one of these guys, this is an alerted state, I know it's got one alert. I can look at the summary tab for that guy and see the health trend for the past 24 hours. We know it's currently in a critical state and basically this guy's in trouble because he is out of space. Um, but yeah, so you can get space info here. You can get uh, a little spark line showing your trends for your performances. And lots of places you can drill down so here you can get a little more detail into a historical view. You should want to look at performance as a whole for this guy. Um, you can bring up the performance tab and you can see a graph here. Here you can select your metrics. Right now we're showing mean, IOPS, latency, and bandwidth, but you can break that into you know, read and write if you need. We show real time, um, 10 second granularity. If you want to show more data depending on the time period, for example, I think for the past three hours we'll show 10 second granularity. For the past week we'll show two and a half minute granularity and up to two years we'll show one hour granularity. Basically we roll up those statistics um, as you go further back in time. You can change your time period here. Let's say I want to change this to three hours. Mm -hmm. um, if you want, you can compare the performance of this controller or this array with someone else. Another one. So let's pick one maybe that has some data. So at that point, you can kind of compare and contrast the two. And you know, assuming you see something you like or something interesting, um, what you're able to do is export that to PDF or CSV or even email that on the fly. So if I say export to PDF, then boom, you've got a PDF file that you can export. So overview. So yeah, so you can see performance basically at the LUN level as well. So if you want to individual, you want to look at an individual LUN, you can certainly click on that and you can compare and contrast, you know, any number of LUNs. Moving on to the manage area. Uh, once again, I, I mentioned earlier about the alerts. So we have built-in health alerts and, or health rules and alert rules. The health alerts, for the most part, they monitor hardware-related items like hardware fail failures, VIM failures, um, fan failures, temperatures, things like that. If you want to create SLA rules, you can determine whether your latency is high or what latency is low, or latency is too, is too low or too high. Um, these can be customized. Um, you can restrict these rules to certain arrays, certain LUNs, and so on. And in terms of alerting, we allow you to send, them, send emails, we allow you to send instant messaging, we allow you to send SNP traps. For Rules, we notice that you can restrict these to groups. So if you're not interested in applying, or you, if you want to apply certain rules to certain groups of devices and a different set of rules to other devices, you can group them in the rules, or group them by groups. And so we allow you to create static groups and smart groups. For example, here's a static group where you can create a group, you can pick an FSP and pick a LUN, and so on. Or you can create a smart group, which is a dynamic group, essentially, where you can say, I want to create a group which I know I have a certain uh, naming convention, like all of my San Francisco arrays. It, if, if I want to create a smart group, I can do that as well. 
So coming over to the actual meat of the manage section where you're actually doing the configuration, um, a lot of the views that we have are, are quite tabular. Um, these are all very customizable where you can select the columns you wish to see. Um, you can sort to find things. You can search. You can filter. Um, all, all of the basic table functionality that you would expect. Um, for example, to create a LUN is quite simple. You'd say add. Um, select the LUN name, thick, thin, dedupe, whatever type you wish to create. And basically, you can click the Create button. That'll create the LUN for you. In fact, we allow you to create a batch of LUNs. So you could say, I want to create 100 LUNs. You can do that quite easily. Um, in most cases, you notice that the, the UI is very dynamic. Um, as and when you click on things, the UI morphs to show you things which are applicable versus non-applicable. For example, if I go to snapshot policy and I want to create a snapshot policy, it's really easy to say, I want to create a snapshot policy on this line, I want to schedule it, and by default it picks very reasonable defaults. And typically that's all you need to do. If you're creating something, the first tab, first tab or so is typically all you need to configure. If you want, you can delve into some more of the knobs that are available um, and click on those as you need. Uh, okay, so continue on with the management. Basically, a lot of the operations are, are quite simplified. So let's say that you want to create a replication for LUN. It's as easy as going to replication policy, say, pick your LUN, pick your replica controller. Um, we'll pre-populate the IP address. You specify whether you want to create the replica to a new LUN or an existing LUN. You select the LUN type. Basically, that's all you need to do. If you want, you can tweak the replication policy. By default, we set it for one hour. You can change that to be based on a watermark, for example. Um, you can tweak any other you know, additional settings, but typically the defaults would suffice. So it's very easy to do that in Symfony. We do all the validation. We make sure that both ends of the replication are set up properly. We check the hardware. We check the software versions and so on. And it's, it's pretty easy to do things like that. In fact, for example, if you wanted to enable failover, um, Hoban will talk a little bit about you know, the stretch cluster configuration later, but let's say that I have an FSP and I want to enable failover. It's as easy as selecting the FSP, enabling failover, picking your peer FSP that you want to enable it on, and clicking stretch cluster, entering a couple IP addresses, entering some credentials, and in the back end, Symphony will validate that both ends are reachable, that they're the same hardware type, um, do all the validation necessary, and basically affect the configuration for you. Um, just real quickly, I want to go over some of the analytics that we provide. There's a rich suite of a lot of reports that you can run. Um, these, for example, you can filter them based on groups so that if you only want to look at a subset of data, you can restricted based on groups. Um, you don't have to run these schedules manually. You can add a report schedule. Um, say every hour you want to run a report you know, daily. You can have this report sent out to you through an email, whether it be a PDF attachment or a CSV attachment. <laughs> and you can also publish it to a web portal. So what is this web portal concept? So let's take a look. I have these schedule reports. These schedule reports, some of them are being published to these web portals here. And if I look <coughs> at my portals that I have defined, these correspond to public-facing URLs, which don't require authentication into Symfony. So once I have a <coughs> report, I can have that send an email, and the email will have a link to this public portal. This public portal here does not require authentication in the Symphony. It's unauthenticated. Um, and at that point, you can get full access to these results here. And this is better than a PDF because you can still do things like filter and sort and so on and still kind of manipulate the report. And it's more live than static. So that's kind of a useful thing. Uh, a couple other things. Yeah, in authentication, we allow Active Directory and LDAP integration. Um, you can set up an email SMTP account to send out uh, email alerts as well as reports. Um, we support instant messaging for sending out alerts. Um, we did, yeah, like I mentioned, we have support for VMware vCenter plugin. So here, basically, if you 
register your vCenter IP address. Basically, we'll push a vCenter plug into it so that once you bring up the vCenter GUI, you can get access to that um, directly.